Welcome back. It is Saturday, July 20th, and the MLB R4 best bets are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday. A very solid start to a post All Star break, a three in one day. We had Rays team total under two and a half in the first seven. Garrett Cole did his job. The Rays continue to struggle versus righties. They only put up one run all game long. We had Gavin Stones under and earned runs. And then parlay of the day was a sweat free winner. If you tailed that, you got a pretty easy winner. So we had Michael Waka and Hunter Brown, both under two and a half earned runs. They both give up zero. So about as easy as it gets. Rangers money line could not get us the sweep. Evaldi just did not have his, his A game yesterday and the Auras took it to him. Rangers will win today, but we will not be touching the Rangers. Don't worry. We got four picks. Hopefully we can deliver you guys a winning card. It is Saturday. Hope you guys have a great weekend. We're just going to dive into the picks. So it's a favor. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new and uh, do all the good things. Go, go use some links down below if you want to in the description for some sports book sign up bonuses. But I'm just diving into my first play of the day. Going to a guy that's on the thumbnail and I got deep in my bag for this one. Shohei Otani, over one and a half bases, minus 110 on BetMGM. Now, if you're a FanDuel better, I hope you sign up for a new book using one of the links down below in the description because FanDuel sits as profit minus 145. I mean, I can't we, can't, we can't take minus 145 base props when you can get minus 110, minus 115 on basically every single other book. Now, I'd play this about minus 120-ish, maybe minus 125. That's normal in my base uh, prop cutoff. Logan and I refuse to take base props above minus 125 unless the guy is just absolutely cracked. But at the same time, look, uh, you can get this at minus 110. Go get that line shop. If you need to sign up for some new sports books, use the links down below in the description. They help support Logan and I. But like I said, Otani, uh, I guess I don't really need to come out here and tell you, hey, Otani's pretty good. I mean, yesterday he actually had a bad start. 0 for 3 with three strikeouts prior to this fourth AB, a ground rule double. Hey, I hope he doesn't do that today. But if he wants to make a sweat into this fourth AB, fine, we'll take it. But today he gets Brian Bayo of the Red Sox. Now, Bayo on the season is allowing a 269 batting average to lefties. Now to righties, he's technically a little bit higher, like 280. Five, not not a big difference, but the OPS actually is higher to lefties, 824, a little higher. And of the 14 home runs he's allowed this year, nine of them have come to left-handed batters. Obviously, Otani is a lefty and Bayo is a righty. Now, if you look at the pitches Bayo's gonna throw, he throws primarily three pitches. He technically has a four-seam fastball that he throws like one percent of the time. I don't expect him to test Otani with a four-seamer, but go for it if you want to. Yeah, three pitches, the lefties, 40% changeup. 35% sinker, 22% slider. Now, Otani's batting average versus right he, those specific pitches, he's hitting 324 versus the changeup, 424 versus the sinker, and 371 versus the slider. Look, he's just been crushing it, and he's seen Bayo before. Five at bats versus him, no walks, which we love, three singles. Now, if Otani wants to get it done via two hits, we'll allow it, but we know he has the power to send one for a ride. Bayo is 25th percentile on the hard hit percentage we've seen it all season long he's been getting hit hard because he misses location he throws a lot of off-speed pitches we're talking about change up sinker sliders when a sinker doesn't sink where does it end up it's just basically right in the middle of the plate and a guy like otani will deplete that and will just demolish that ball and it would not shock me today if bayo misses location and otani says all right fine i'll take this one for a ride sends it to mars i think the dodgers have a great chance at going over two and a half earned runs for bayo which i did consider but i don't think they're getting there if otani's at least not doing a little bit of the damage he doesn't walk a ton knock on wood we don't want a ton of walks here for otani because that doesn't help us but look i think bayo misses location at least once tonight and i think otani depletes that ball just demolishes it so otani one and a half bases take his over i really like that as my first pick of the day i have another pick in la but i'll wait just to talk about that one after logan's pick of the day logan where are you headed yeah so for mine i'm going to a double header and I'm, and I'm taking game one of the doubleheader. I need to stress this. Game one, the first game, starting at one o'clock, taking the Braves on the first five innings run line, minus a half, minus 105 odds on DraftKings is your best value. Now, again, I'll say it for the third time. This is game one of the doubleheader. If you want to go pet back uh, Bryce Elder in game two, that's on you. I'm backing Charlie Morton uh, against Kyle Gibson. Charlie Morton starts for the Braves, 4.07 ERA and a 1.22 whip. Solid numbers for Uncle Charlie. I mean, he, he's okay. At home, his ERA drops to a 3.71, which is what he finds himself today. And the, the real reason why I wanted to back him is because I'm like, all right, Charlie Morton being an older pitcher, surely he's better on rest. Yeah, he is. On extended days rest with six plus days of rest, Morton has a 2.68 ERA and only a 187 batting average allowed. Those are important because obviously he's got extended time off from the All-Star break. He's coming back. He's feeling good. You know, those those old bones, uh, they aren't like they, they used to be. 
I really do like Charlie Morton today. And what I also like about him is that he gets tougher third time through the order, which is not, that's normally not the what you see from most pitchers. Normally what the batters make the adjustment third time through the order. Charlie Morton, let's, let's talk about his splits. 246 batting average first time through the order. 239 second time through the order. 193 third time through the order. So it's like he's, he's under 200 batting average allowed third time through the order. And that's, that's very important today against a Cardinals team that is coming in pretty hot against right-handed batters. They're hitting 295 against righties this month. But I'm pretty confident that Charlie Morton will be, be able to uh, give a lot of these hitters some interesting looks. And to be able to get through that third time through the order and, and close out the five innings of, of pretty solid baseball, I think he gets that done. And on the other side, I really like the Braves to get runs on Kyle Gibson. Kyle Gibson starts for the Cardinals. 4.16 ERA and a 1.36 whip. Now we got the battle of two veterans. Obviously, Kyle Gibson, uh, a veteran just like Charlie Morton. And Gibson faced the Braves almost a month ago. He went four innings pitched, four in runs. I really, Gibson not being a strikeout pitcher will hurt him in this matchup. I don't see a ton of adjustments being made, uh, being the pitch to contact pitcher that he is. The Braves hitters just saw him. You know his arsenal. You know what he's going to do. He wants you to roll over on some soft contact ground ball outs. Can you adjust to that, Braves? They already hit tagged him for four. Can can we do something similar to that today? I think they can. He's also been getting touched up recently as well. Kyle Gibson's not in great form. His last two starts, he's allowed 10 and 9 hits and only four and five innings pitched. When we isolate this to the first five innings, if Kyle Gibson is not you know, coming out pretty sharp in this one, the Braves will capitalize and they will give us that lead through fives. Braves also hit better at home this month. 228 on the road compared to a 242 uh, uh, at home. I really do like the the Braves in this spot. I like them to get up early on Kyle Gibson through five innings. And then the reason I'm not touching the full game is because it's like, well, why will we touch full game? It's a doubleheader. They, they bullpen usage could be wonky. Five innings. We're going to have Charlie Morton versus Kyle Gibson. I'm, I'm back in Charlie Morton in the Braves on the first five innings run line. Love that pick. But Austin, you got, an, you got some more picks. Where are you going? Yep, I got two more. Let's wrap up the video. And I'm going to, just like Logan did a game pick, I got a game pick for y'all. Unlike Logan's, his is early. Mine's going to be a really, really late night game as I'm going out to Seattle, where I'll be taking the Mariners. First five money line, which is currently about minus 120 on BetMGM. Now, I consider going full game. It's about the same. I just personally prefer the starting pitching here for the Mariners. You can go full game. The Mariners technically have the better bullpen, and the Astros did use some of their top uh, high leverage guys. I just like this matchup for Kirby versus Valdez. Like I said, I think the Mariners win this game full, but if there's some wonky things going on late in the bullpens, I don't really want to touch it. I just want to target these first, the first five innings. Now, like I said, we're going to have Framber Valdez go, and we'll talk about him in a second. But yesterday, if you back the Mariners, he got cooked. I mean, we took under Browns under and earned runs, and he pitched pretty well, but he did have to go through some jams. He had bases loaded once. He had first and second no outs. And the Mariners just couldn't get anything going. They went four for 30 as a team. 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. And they lost the first 5-3-0. Lost the full game 3-0. Now, today, we're going to need some run support. And I think they get some run support today. But we need some actually some good pitching. Luis Castillo pitched all right. I mean, three earned runs isn't terrible. But I like George Kirby a lot tonight. Kirby at home, 2.63 ERA and a .95 whip. If you have a whip below one, it's pretty good and he's been really good at home he's averaging 10 strikeouts per nine innings at home and i don't expect him to come out here and get a ton of k's the astros don't strike out a ton but a 221 batting average allowed at home as well now he also has a great success versus the astros he's pitched against them twice this year both one earned runs and six innings pitched he pitched against them twice uh once only once well twice last year well he went 12 and a two-thirds innings pitched only gave up one earned run so Look, this is the lineup he's had really good success against. And we know the Astros last year really good. They they haven't weren't great to start the year, but been pretty good here too. I just think he's going to be able to pitch well. He's been really good at home. If he goes out there and gives us five shutout innings, at worst we push here, I think he gives us a decent shot at cash in this one. Maybe he doesn't limit this Astros lineup to zero and runs. Maybe he gives up one or two. We can live with that. It's the three, four, five that we'd really struggle with, but been really good at home. Now, the Mariners offense is the reason we are here. We're going to need them to show up and they're not an offense i'm like oh mariners on the schedule let me go out there and back them no but at the same time i love their matchup against framber valdez now this is the matchup we talked about yesterday in the parlay of the day if you read it we don't do them on on weekends but if you read the article yesterday number one i appreciate you guys for supporting those articles but i talked about in that article they have really, really the mariners uh, that is really struggled versus right into pitching it's the reason we took hunter brown's under and earned runs 
Today, they get the lefty, Framber Valdez. Framber on the road, 3.97 ERA and a 1.36 whip, 268 batting average allowed. So not great numbers. That whip's a little high. Framber's also really struggled against the Mariners. In his last seven starts versus the Mariners with, you know, since 2022, a couple coming in 2022, three in 2023, two this year. He struggled 5.54 ERA in his last seven starts versus the Mariners. In those starts, three. Two, two, six, three, five, three earned runs. I mean, this guy's struggling. They've seen him pretty well, and they've seen him a ton this year. Five and three earned runs allowed to the Mariners. Now, while you might be like Austin, the Mariners' offense are not one that I really want to trust. I understand that, but they've been good versus lefties. In July, Mariners, 287 batting average, sixth highest, 156 WRC+. plus fifth highest first left-handed pitching they've actually hit lefties right uh, well they haven't hit righties at all but lefties they've been doing pretty decently additionally runners in scoring position this is where bets are determined logan could get three million hits on kyle gibson but if you don't get those timely hits it's where the games are decided but they've hit really well versus lefties this season three or just in july 353 sixth highest with a 278 wrc plus fourth highest with runners in scoring position versus lefties in July. This is a Mariners team that's been hitting well against lefties, hitting well with runners in scoring position against lefties. I'm going to trust them here. They've done really well against Valdez. I don't need him to give up three earned runs, but if he does, that wouldn't be terrible. I need Kirby to be locked in. I need Valdez to give up some uh, some uh, runs. And with Valdez, that is out to props in at 17 and a half. Heck, it opened at 16 and a half. Something suspect is there given how bad the Mariners have been. I think this is a good Mariners offense game, offensive game, and I think they show up and they think they get some run support on Val, uh, get some runs up on Valdez and Kirby hold things down. Give me the uh, Mariners first five money line. Like I said, if you take the full game money line, you can do that. First by money line, I don't mind because we do have push potential. If they tie through five, we get our money back. Whereas there's no way they're tying through the full game. So I really like the Mariners first five money line as my favorite game pick of the day. And finally, I'll wrap up the video. Fourth and final pick of the day, another player prop. And we're going out to LA as I teased in the Otani pick. I'm going to Justin Robleski of the Los Angeles Dodgers under two and a half earned runs, minus 125 on DraftKings. Now, we are fading the Red Sox once again. I'm not a Red Sox hater. Um, they actually had plenty of chances yesterday to cash, and they could struggle with runners on scoring position. If they want to continue that, I'll allow it. But I really like uh, Robleski's matchup tonight. Now, if you've never heard of Justin Robleski, I don't blame you. I haven't watched him a ton, and there's really not a lot of footage out there because he's only started two games. In those two games, he went out there and gave up four earned runs in his first start, three earned runs in his next start. So he's obviously over the earned runs in both of his starts so far this year. Why are we picking him to go under? Well, I like this matchup here. Now, he struggled with the long ball, four home runs allowed in two starts, but I believe the all-star break came at a good time for him, a guy that you know had his first two starts, and now he had a little bit of an extended break to kind of figure things out. And if we saw yesterday with Dave Roberts, the, the LA manager, he doesn't really want the starters to go a third time through the order. Heck, Gavin Stone was pulled. What did he He gave up a solo bomb to Duran with two outs in the fifth, and then he uh, came out and got the final out, and then they took him out. He was at like 70-something pitches. So this is a guy that Dave Roberts and this L.A. Dodgers obviously don't want their guys to get injured. And that third time through the order, they're a little bit suspect. So don't expect a long leash for Robleski tonight unless he's cooking. If he's cooking, then they'll leave him out there, which is fine with us. If he's cooking, he's probably not giving up 300 runs. But like I said, the Red Sox have not been great. Really good against right-handed right -handed pitching, which we faded them against righty yesterday. Really struggling against lefties. In July, Red Sox batting a big 190. Second lowest in the majors with a 37 WRC plus lowest in the majors versus lefties. They've really struggled. And not only that, they've struggled. It was just putting the ball in play. 36% K percentage versus lefties in July with a 156 batting average with a 24 WRC plus a 47 K percentage with runners in scoring position. I don't need to tell you, they've really struggled against lefties with runners in scoring position without scoring position. Any way you can slice it, they've struggled against lefties, and obviously Robleski, if I didn't say, he is a lefty. Now, the four lefties they faced in July, those guys have allowed two, one, one, and one earned run. Now, those were Trevor Rogers, Nestor Cortez, J.P. Sears, and Cole Rakins. Obviously, there's some good names in there. I mean, J.P. Sears, he's always hit or miss. Cortez has been really good at home, which is where they faced him. And Cole Reagans is one of the better lefties there is. Am I saying Robleski is a great lefty like those guys? Maybe not, but on a power with Trevor Rogers, I certainly think so. I mean, this is just a guy that I think pitches decently today, and so do the Bucks. We look at his strikeout prop, five and a half, and it's sitting, sure, at plus money. The guy hasn't had more than four strikeouts in either of his two starts. His hits allowed, sitting at four and a half. His walks allowed is at two and a half, but it is plus 150 on the over. 
And so far through two starts, this is a guy that's pitched well versus righties. 179 batting average to righties. Yesterday, I talked about Gavin Stone. He's really good against lefties because the Red Sox are a team that stack the platoon against the other side. So they're going to stack a lot of righties today, and he's been really good against righties. Heck, you'll probably only see three lefties. Two of those will be Duran and Devers, two guys that have really struggled against lefties as well this year. So like I said, I think Justin Robleski has his first really good start this year. If you look at the Red Sox team total sitting at one and a half in the first five, I don't think he goes more than five innings here. So, you know, maybe we're looking at that. But I think Robleski pitches decently today. We can afford some unearned runs if he wants to do that. I think Justin Robleski, you maybe, maybe never heard of him. The lefty, 24-year-old for the Dodgers. I think he pitches his best start of his career. And I think he gets the job done. So those are our four favorite picks of the day. I'll do a short recap. We started with Otani Basis. Same game we had Robleski under and earned runs. We have Braves in game one. Game one, game one, game one, game one. Run first five run line minus a half minus one hundred five and Mariners first five money line to wrap up the night late night. Hopefully the Mariners can come through. Those are four favorite picks of the day. You guys let us know your favorites down below. It's Austin Logan. We're signing out and we'll see you guys back tomorrow. Hopefully with the brooms out, but I will settle with another three in one day. We'll see you guys then. Peace.